Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, I'm Dr. Downey and today we are going to discuss Osterine and an Osterine only cycle. So this is a follow-up video to the video I released yesterday comparing Osterine to Anivar. So some individuals wanted me to make another video on an Osterine only cycle and what I, what I think of it personally. Obviously, I don't condone the use of illegal substances or PEDs, but I will give my opinion on the research. Remember, this is not medical advice. So, Osterine is also known by many other names, such as S22 and Anobosom or something like that, and it's one of the most researched psalms, and anecdotal evidence on the internet would suggest that it's one of the milder psalms and best to use when doing a cut since it isn't particularly anabolic in the fact that it won't gain you a lot of muscle mass but it'll help maintain your size while cutting. So first I'll just go over some background information and then I will say what I think about an Osterine only cycle. So first of all, let's look at the pharmacokinetics. So it is very bioavailable, meaning it's highly absorbed in the stomach when taking by a, you know, a, as a tablet, which means that you don't have to inject it. Um, it peaks within an hour or so of intake and it lasts, it'll be in your system for around 14 to 21 hours. So daily dosing is recommended. Um, in terms of studies, 3 milligrams for 12 weeks is the highest these studies ever went to. However, um, reports on forums usually suggest 5 to 30 milligrams daily for 8 weeks. But let's look at the studies and see what the studies suggest. So first we'll look at the rat studies and see how it reacts in rats. So in rat studies, Osterine was shown to be highly selective, meaning it um, attached to the muscles and made muscles bigger without affecting other tissues such as the prostate. Furthermore, which was surprising to me because other studies haven't demonstrated this effect as well before, but LH and FSH was not affected, meaning there was minimal suppression in these rats. And um, if we look at RAD140 or LGD 4033, these are actually have been shown to be suppressive in rats, and so is Anivar. And obviously S23 is highly pot uh, potent at suppressing LH and FSH. What is also interesting is it was found to be a weak antagonist of the progesterone receptor. And what this means in terms of clinical application is that um, it's well known that antagonists to progesterone do sometimes cause an elevation in prolactin. So prolactin may be an issue for some. I did not know about this effect until yesterday where someone pointed it out to me and I thought it was very interesting. Now let's see how it fares in human studies. So the first or phase one trial was done on healthy menopausal women, three milligrams for 12 weeks. They just noted the typical thing, lean mass gain. However, they didn't know change in strength or the change in strength was not significant. Um, this study was a bit of a boring one, so we'll move on to the next, which I referenced yesterday, and this phase two trial was done in elderly women and men, healthy elderly women and men, and they looked at varying dosages. Tw three milligrams was the highest used, and they did it for 12 weeks. They found that the individuals taking three milligrams gained about 1.3 kilograms in mass, lean mass, that is which is a very significant amount, especially for the dosage they use. That's a, quite a low dosage, and you wouldn't really find that with your typical oral steroids, such an increase in lean mass at such a low dosage. Furthermore, it actually improved their insulin sensitivity and decreased triglycerides. Triglycerides being a... some like to use it as a marker of cardiovascular risk. Interestingly though, at such a low dose it decreased HDL quite substantially, um, which is not a good sign, which means it's more potent at such a low dose. 
because things like Anavar typically do not cause such drastic changes at a low dose, but remember SARMs are stronger at lower dosages and you can expect more side effect effects at lower dosages. In terms of estrogen free and total testosterone, those were not altered, which was interesting. FSH and LH in men was also not altered, however in women it did decrease slightly, which suggests that it might not be very suppressive, especially to men. SHBG decreased, meaning, oh, well, significantly, meaning that if you were to stack it with another steroid, it would make that other steroid more available to attach to the receptors, so it could be useful in stacking. What was problematic, however, is that there were elevations in the patient's liver enzymes. Um, in a few of the patients, and one had to discontinue therapy because they had evidence of disease drug-induced liver toxicity. So at these low dosages, they are quite potent and quite toxic. So in another phase two trial done in cancer patients suffering from cachexia, dosages of one milligram and three milligrams were compared to placebo. And what was interesting is that the one milligram group actually had the same, if not more, lean mass gain than the three milligram group. Again, a common side effect was nausea and diarrhea, and a few individuals had transient elevations in their liver enzymes. All of these di uh, disappeared on discontinuation. The reason I think that the 1 milligram group had more lean mass gain than the 3 milligram group is that the 3 milligram group had more evidence of nausea and diarrhea, meaning they probably did not consume as much food as a 1 milligram group. So this would suggest that 3 milligrams is quite potent and could, might not be beneficial to gaining size if you cannot eat. Currently, there are phase 3 trials going on demonstrating similar effects for lean, uh, lean tissue gain. So let's look at an osterine-only cycle and see what you should expect if you are currently using one. I do not suggest you do one at all, um, but let's see hypothetically if someone were to do an osterine-only cycle. As I mentioned, it is possibly one of the least suppressive compounds I have come across in the research. However, anecdotal reports of bodybuilders using higher dosages on forums does suggest it is suppressive, however, not to the extent of traditional oral steroids. It doesn't appear to be estrogenic, so it doesn't convert to estrogen. However, it might possibly decrease testosterone, which could decrease estrogen. However, this wasn't shown in the studies, but at higher dosages this may change, especially if there is suppression. The only issue is that with the decrease of testosterone, the testosterone to estrogen ratio is changed, meaning you could possibly have gynecomastia as a result of that. And therefore, a serum would be most applicable for this case to prevent gyno. You do not want an AI because your estrogen levels will always be already be low. However, they'll be high in comparison to testosterone, but you don't want to lower your estrogen lower than it already is, because then you come in, then you have have more side effects than you already do. I also suggest that if you do want to try combat these um, suppression side effects, combining HCG or human chorionic gonadotropin along with the SARM might help with the symptoms of suppression if you do experience them. Now, what I want to mention is the liver. This is a massive issue which I don't think is spoken about in the bodybuilding community, especially in the SARMs community, and that's that SARMs are much more liver toxic than traditional oral steroids. Even more potent than compounds like anadrol, I've, well milligram per milligram that is, but in studies with anadrol at 50 milligrams, they have not demonstrated this level of liver toxicity as 3 milligrams of osterine has. Or perhaps they have, but it would be a similar, similar degree. This means that it's really important to take care of your liver when on SARMs, and not just ignore the fact that your liver could be affected when on SARMs. 
Just uh, uh, people assume that SARMs are safe and that they don't cause these side effects. However, it appears in the literature that at low dosages, those lower than what most people take, these side effects do occur. And so I think it's important just to take the extra precaution and use a liver support. Now for the part that everyone wants to know about, what about muscle mass? What could you expect in terms of muscle mass? So remember lean mass gains were noticeable even at one milligram, which was equivalent to three milligrams in the one study. Anecdotally, most people don't report that it's great for size. However, they do report that it does help keeping on to size when cutting. But I have an interesting hypothesis about, about why Osterine is not good for size and why Osterine should not be used at a dose higher than 6 milligrams. So if we look at this graph which I displayed in the previous video, the top curve is Levita Ani muscle. So Levita Ani muscle is what is used to test the anabolic ability of a drug in a rat. They look at the size of that. So one would traditionally expect that as the doses increase, the effect or anabolic ability of the drug also decreases. However, if we look here at plateaus almost completely, which means that over a certain point, there is literally no point of taking this drug because you will just accumulate side effects and actually have no additional muscle mass gain. And what point would this be? And at what point would this be? Well, if we look at this graph, it's about at 0.1 milligrams per day in the rat. The effects seem to decrease ever so slightly, and 0.1 seems to be the most optimal, so you'll get the most optimal anabolic effect. So 0.1 milligram per day in a rat, if we use various conversion factors, this converts to about 0.083 milligrams per kg or milligram per kg per day in humans. Therefore, the average 70 kg individual would need or would take something like 6 milligrams daily. And going over 6 milligrams daily is almost pointless because as you see in the graph I just displayed, there seems to be no anabolic benefit. Therefore, I would argue that there is not much point of going over 6 milligrams is that 3 milligrams there are only there's already evidence of toxicity and going over 6 milligrams may accumulate this to a point where osterine isn't safe at all to run it still isn't safe to use but it's even less safe when used over these drug dosages so again it does seem like osterine can hold on to lean mass as demonstrated in the studies they lost fat mass while building 1 to 2 kgs of lean mass but as I said, higher dosages seem kind of pointless. The duration should be limited to 8 weeks. However, these studies were done for 12 weeks, but as you extend the duration of your cycle, suppression will become more of an issue and so will toxicity, as that will accumulate eventually. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a comment below, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.